Okay, picture this. You go to the doctor and they just like create an MRI right there from like describing your symptoms. Whoa, that's uh, pretty futuristic. It is, right? But that future might be like closer than we think. Yeah, medical AI is moving so fast, it's kind of crazy. Exactly. So we're diving into this new research paper. It's called, get this, Health GPT, a medical large vision language model for unifying comprehension and generation via heterogeneous knowledge adaptation. Try saying that three times fast. No way. But yeah, it's about this AI, Health GPT, and it can like understand and generate medical images. Wild, right? So wait, it's not just reading scans, it's making them too. Yeah, so like it can look at an x-ray, tell you if there's a fracture, answer questions about a CT scan, even understand those microscopic images, and then get this, it can turn a CT scan into an MRI image, fix up damaged images, and even take a written report and make a brand new chest x-ray from that description. Hold on, my brain is like overloaded. How does he even learn to do all that? That was a big challenge for the researchers. Like, how do you teach an AI to do both of those things? Because understanding an image is kind of like teaching it to read a map it needs to find the important parts and understand what they mean. Right, right. But making an image is more like drawing a map from scratch. It needs to know where every little detail goes. Okay, so it's like having one AI that's both a medical expert, you know, like diagnosing problems, and an artist who can create super detailed images. Exactly. And how do you teach it to do both? Well, the researchers came up with this thing called heterogeneous low rank adaptation, H Laura for short. Catchy. Yeah. So think of it like Health GPT has this toolbox with specialized plugins, right? So when it needs to understand an image, it uses one set of tools. And when it needs to make an image, it just swaps those out for a different set. Okay. No more AI brain freeze. Exactly. It knows which tools for which job. But what about like what it's learning from? You can't just give it a medical textbook and expect it to be a doctor, right? You're totally right. You need data, tons of it. So they made this huge data set called VL Health to train Health GPT. VL Health. Yeah, think of it like a medical library, right? It's got over 765,000 question and answer pairs. Those are for understanding images. And over 783,000 image pairs for generating them. Whoa, that's a lot of data. It is. We're talking 11 different types of medical imaging covering all sorts of diseases. That's like what? A crash course in medical school at warp speed? Something like that. So after all that training, how did it do? The results were pretty impressive. Like in tests, Health GPT beat other medical AIs at those image understanding tasks. And for making images. It was actually better than those general AIs that are specifically made for creating images. Like when it came to medical images, it was top notch. Okay, so it's good at understanding images and creating them, but what does that mean for like us? How does this help in the real world? The possibilities are pretty mind blowing. Well, remember how we talked about making a chest x-ray from a written report? That could completely change medical education. How so? Well, imagine a student learning about some lung condition. They could describe the symptoms and bam, instantly see the x-ray that matches. Wow, yeah, like a visual aid, but way more specific. Exactly, no more generic diagrams. That's incredible. What else? Well, think about a doctor in like a really rural area. Maybe there's no radiologist nearby. Right, right. They could describe a patient's x-ray to health GPT, get a second opinion, potentially save lives, you know? Yeah, because not everyone has access to those specialists right away. Exactly. So health GPT could help level the playing field, bring that expertise to more places. That would be amazing. So it could make quality healthcare like more accessible. That's the hope, but it's early days, right? We need more research, more testing before we see this in hospitals and clinics everywhere. And there are all those ethical questions about AI and healthcare that we need to talk about too. Oh yeah, for sure. But for now, let's stick with the technical side. There's this other fascinating thing in the paper, these specific tasks that Health GPT is really good at. Like what? Things like modality conversion and super resolution image reconstruction. It sounds pretty sci-fi, right? It does. Break it down for me. What do those even mean? Okay, so modality conversion is basically taking one type of medical image and turning it into another type. Like what? Like turning a CT scan into an MRI, for example. Wait, why would you need to do that? Don't they all kind of show the same thing? Not really. They each give doctors different information. Like CT scans are great for bones, but MRIs are better for soft tissues. Sometimes a doctor might only have one type of scan and need to see what the other one would show. Oh, I see. So instead of scheduling a whole new scan, which takes time and money, they could just use Health GPT to convert the one they have. Wow, that's amazing. Like a universal translator for medical images? Yeah, pretty much. And the researchers tested Health GPT on like four different conversion tasks, and it was consistently better than other models. That's incredible. And get this, they used these special measurements to compare the generated images to real scans. Oh, wow. And Health GPT scored way higher. So it's not just theory, it actually makes really good images. Yeah, images that are comparable to the real deal. That's awesome. Okay, what about that other thing, the... Uh... Super resolution. Yes, super resolution. So imagine you have this blurry, low resolution MRI, right? Super resolution basically makes it crystal clear, it adds more detail, so it's easier to spot tiny things that might have been missed before. That sounds super useful, especially for medical imaging, where every little detail could be important. Exactly. They tested Health GPT on 4X super resolution, so making the images four times bigger. And once again, it totally outperformed the competition. Wow, no surprise there. But it wasn't just about the numbers. They also used this measurement called LPS, which basically tells you how close the generated image is to what a human would see as a real image. So they wanted to make sure the AI wasn't just making images that looked good to other computers, but images that would actually be useful for doctors. Exactly. And guess what? Health GPT got the lowest score on LPEPS, which means its images are not only better objectively, but they also look more real and are easier for doctors to understand. So we've got this AI that can understand medical language, 
analyze and create these super detailed images, and even convert between different types of scans. It's pretty remarkable, right? It is, but let's not forget, it all starts with understanding what those images actually mean, right? Connecting the dots between the visuals and the medical condition. Oh, absolutely. Health GPT isn't just processing pixels, it's understanding the medical concepts behind those pixels, like a med student who studied for years. So it's not just matching patterns, it's like thinking medically. Right. If you show it an x-ray and ask, does this patient have pneumonia? It's not just looking for visual clues. It's using its knowledge of pneumonia, the symptoms, what it usually looks like on an x-ray. Exactly. It's like having an expert analyze the image, combining the visuals with a deep understanding of the condition. That's what sets Health GPT apart. Wow, it's like a medical expert and an artist all in one. Yeah, it's pretty incredible, but there's more. The researchers also tested it on this brand new task. Oh, what's that? They called it Report to CXR. Basically, imagine a radiologist looks at a chest x-ray and writes a report about what they see. Okay. Report to CXR is the reverse. You give Health GPT a written report and it makes the chest x-ray. Whoa, hold on. You're telling me it can paint a picture from a description? Pretty much. They use data from this data set called Mimic CXR, which has chest x-ray images and their matching reports. They give Health GPT a bunch of reports and, yep, it made chest x-ray images that matched what was written in the reports. No way. Did they give any examples of what it made? Like, how detailed were they? Oh, yeah. They showed cases where it could depict different levels of injury and even the exact location of problems in the lungs. So like if the report said the patient had pneumonia in a specific part of the lung, Health GPT could draw that. Exactly. Like it has a medical illustrator built in. That's mind blowing. This could seriously revolutionize medical education, make complex stuff way easier to understand. Totally. And it's not just for education. Think about a doctor in a remote area, limited resources. They could describe symptoms to Health GPT, get a hypothetical x ray. Wow, that could help with diagnosis and treatment, even in places without all the fancy equipment. Exactly. This report to CXR thing really shows how Health GPT connects those dots between written information and images. It's incredible. But I want to go back to something you mentioned earlier about training an AI for like understanding versus creating images. Yeah, how that can actually be a problem. Yeah, how did the researchers deal with that? Remember HLORA, the toolbox thing? That's the key. It lets health GPT switch between different learning modes depending on the task. Oh, right. So when it's trying to understand an image, it uses one set of tools focusing on the big picture, those high level concepts. Okay. But when it needs to make a new image, it switches tools focusing on the details, the exact arrangement of things. So it can be both a big picture thinker and a detail oriented artist. Exactly. And they actually tested HLORA again for other approaches like training on both tasks at the same time. And HLORA was better way better, higher accuracy, better performance overall. So it's not just a theory, it actually works. Yep, HLOR is a game changer. It lets health GPT be good at multiple things and opens up all these possibilities for even more advanced medical AIs in the future. That's amazing. So we've covered a lot here, how health GPT can analyze and make images, understand medical stuff, and even connect words and pictures. It's pretty groundbreaking stuff. It is, but this is just the beginning, right? Health GPT is still in its early stages. There's so much more to come. Definitely. In the next part, we'll dig into some of the ways health GPT could change medical practice, what it might mean for the future of healthcare. Stay tuned, folks, because our journey into the world of medical AI is just getting getting started. Welcome back to our deep dive into Health GPT. So in the first part, we talked about all the cool stuff Health GPT can do, you know, analyzing those images, creating them, even turning those reports into x-rays. But now I want to talk about the uh, what if, what are the like the downsides? What if things go wrong? You're right to be thinking about that. Any new tech, especially AI, comes with risks, especially one as powerful as this. Exactly. Like what about security? Medical data is like really sensitive. We hear about those data breaches all the time. What's to stop someone from getting this info? Data security is super important. The people making this need to make sure that any system using health GPT has like really, really strong security. Okay. Like what? Things like encryption, you know, access controls and those secure data storage places. That's how you minimize the risk of those breaches. So it's like a digital fault for this information. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. But even with the best fault, people make mistakes. Right? What if someone accidentally accesses stuff they shouldn't? That's why you need multiple layers of protection. You know, you need strict rules about who can see what, and everyone has to be trained on those rules. And transparency is key. Patients need to know how their data is being used and what's being done to protect it. Okay, so it's not just about the tech. It's about the rules and making sure everyone follows them. Exactly. But let's say the security is all good. What about the AI itself? How do we know it's giving us good info, you know, stuff we can trust? That's where testing comes in. Before you use any AI like this in real medicine, you have to test it like crazy. To make sure it's accurate. Yeah, you got to compare it to human experts, try it out in different situations, make sure it can handle the complexity of real medical cases. So it's like putting a medical student through years of training and exams, but the student's an AI. Pretty much. And then you've got the fact that tech is always changing, right? What if health GPT gets outdated? That's a good point. We can't just set it and forget it, can we? Nope. You need constant monitoring, updates. You need a system to watch how health GPT is doing, catch any problems, and then update it with new data, you know, keep it current. Okay, so we've got security, reliability, and updates. But there's this big question I keep thinking about. What does health GPT mean for, like, doctors? Are we all going to be replaced by robots? That's the big question, isn't it? It is. But I don't think it's about humans versus machines. It's more like collaboration. The folks who made Health GPT, they see it as a tool to help humans, not replace them. Okay, so like a superpower assistant. Exactly. But it would definitely change how doctors work. How so? Well, imagine a doctor sees a patient with like a bunch of confusing symptoms. Instead of ordering a ton of tests and waiting forever for results, they could use Health GPT 
right there in the exam room. To analyze all that info. Yeah, like medical history, scans, lab reports, all of it. In real time. Yep. It could point out possible diagnoses, highlight the concerning stuff, even suggest more tests. So it's like having a medical consultant right there with you. Exactly. And that means faster decisions, better outcomes for patients. That makes sense. But health GPT is still a tool, right? It's not making the decisions. Right. Doctors still have the final say. They use their judgment, their expertise to make the best call for the patient. So it's a partnership. A partnership between human and machine. Each brings something different to the table. And that partnership means doctors need new skills, right? It's not just about the medical stuff anymore. It's also about working with AI. Yeah, like knowing how to use it, how to understand what it's telling you, making sure it's used ethically. It's a whole new way to thinking about being a doctor. It is. And it's not just doctors. Patients need to be in the loop, too. Oh, Oh, yeah, for sure. They need to know how AI is being used in their care, and they need to be comfortable asking questions. Transparency is key, right? Absolutely. Patients need to know the limits of AI, that it's not magic, and it's still being developed. So we're all in this together. Doctors, patients, the people doing the research, everyone. We've got to have these conversations about AI in healthcare and work together to make sure it's used safely and for everyone's benefit. It's a team effort. It is, and it'll take a lot of talking and adapting as AI keeps evolving. Well, it sounds like health GPT and AI in general could change everything about healthcare. It really could. But we need to be careful right? Think about those risks and make sure we're asking the right questions. Absolutely. We got to be excited about the potential, but also realistic about the challenges. Speaking of challenges, there are a few things Health GPT isn't so good at yet. Oh, okay. Every superhero has their weakness, right? What are Health GPTs? Well, one of the biggest is that it mostly works with those still images like x-rays and MRIs. It hasn't been trained to analyze videos or those real-time measurements. So like heart rate, breathing, stuff like that. Yeah. It might miss things you could only see by watching someone move or tracking their vitals over time. It's like seeing a snapshot instead of a whole movie. Exactly. And while Health GPT can make these amazing images, it's still limited by the data it learned from. What do you mean? Well, if it hasn't seen enough examples of, say, a rare condition, it might not make an accurate image. So it's still learning. It needs more experience. It does. And even with tons of data, there's this risk of uh, overfitting. Overfitting? What's that? It's when the AI gets too focused on the data it's seen and can't handle new stuff. So it could be great at some things, but then totally miss something new? Exactly. Like a student who aced all the practice tests, but then bombs the real one. Oh, I get it. So we need to keep researching, keep refining the model, give it new data, make sure it can adapt. It's a work in progress. It is, but a super exciting one. Totally agree. Okay, so Health GPT is amazing, but still has room to grow. Definitely. Definitely. But let's zoom out a bit. How do you see health GPT changing, you know, the whole medical field? What changes are coming? Well, that's a big question. It is, but a really important one. Well, one thing that comes to mind is diagnosis and treatment. With health GPT's ability to analyze, process, generate, it could really speed things up. Yeah, think about it. A doctor sees a patient, complex symptoms. Instead of all those tests and waiting, they could use health GPT right there. To look at their history, scans, all that. Right. And health GPT could flag things, point out concerns, suggest tests. That could save so much time. And it could improve accuracy. So earlier treatment, better outcomes. Amazing. But it's not just about diagnosis, right? What about treatment plans? Oh, yeah, that's another huge area. Imagine a cancer patient, radiation therapy. Health GPT could analyze their scans, find the exact tumor, and even predict how it'll respond to treatment. Whoa, that's pretty advanced. It is. Doctors could then target the radiation precisely, minimize damage to healthy tissue, give the patient the best chance. That's incredible. It's like personalized medicine on a whole new level. Right. And that's just one example. Health GPT could personalize drug doses, predict complications, even guide surgery. Like having a medical genius by your side. Pretty much. And don't forget about research and education. Oh, yeah, good point. Researchers could use health GPT to analyze huge amounts of data, find patterns humans might miss. That could lead to, like, new discoveries, right? About what causes diseases and how to treat them? Exactly. And for education, imagine interactive simulations, students practicing on virtual patients. That's amazing. So much safer than learning on real people. Right. The possibilities are really endless. So health GPT could change diagnosis, treatment, research, education. It's a total game changer. It is. But remember, technology is only as good as the people using it. We have to make sure it's used responsibly. Exactly. We need open conversations about AI and healthcare involving everyone, patients, doctors, policymakers, the whole public. It's a joint effort figuring this out together. It is. And if we do it right, healthcare could be better than we ever imagined. But there are still potential problems, right? Things we might not even be thinking about yet. That's true. Which brings us to a big question. What does all this tell us about humans and machines and medicine? It seems like AI isn't just a tool. It's more like a partner. A partner we're still figuring out. Exactly. In the last part, we'll dive into that partnership, how human expertise and AI can work together to like advance medicine and improve care. We'll also look at those unanswered questions, those potential consequences. Give you some things to think about as we navigate this new world together. So we've spent like the last two parts of this deep dive talking about health GPT, what it can do, the good and the uh, the not so good. But now I want to step back. Think big picture. Yeah, good idea. We've gotten pretty deep into the technical stuff, but health GPT's impact, it goes way beyond like algorithms and data sets. It's changing how we think about healthcare and AI in our lives. So it's not just a new gadget. It's a whole new way of thinking about medicine. Exactly. Think about it for like forever. Medical knowledge was passed down, you know, teacher to student, doctor to doctor. It was in textbooks, journals, only for people who studied for years. But now with AI like Health GPT, that knowledge, it's in algorithms learned from massive data, accessible instantly. It's like democratizing that expertise, making it available to way more people.
Yeah, that's a good way to put it. And that changes everything for healthcare. Imagine like med students in the future, they might not just be memorizing textbooks, they'll be learning how to work with AI, understand what it's telling them. Yeah, they'll need to learn the language of AI, how these systems work, how to use them, right? So it's not just about medical science anymore, it's about AI too. It is, and it's not just for doctors, it's for patients too. Imagine going to the doctor and they explain your diagnosis using insights from health GPT. That would be different, for sure. It's not just taking the doctor's word anymore, it's understanding how AI is part of the process. Right, it's not just the doctor knowing everything, it's more collaborative. Patients and doctors working together, using AI to understand better, make better decisions. So it's not just tech changing, it's the whole culture of medicine. Absolutely. And that brings up a bunch of questions. Like what? Well, like how do we make sure AI is used ethically? How do we prevent bias in the algorithms? How do we protect patient privacy when their data is used to train these things? Yeah, those are big questions. Not easy to answer. Not at all. But we got to ask them as we move into this AI-driven healthcare world. So we need to be careful, think ahead, and really talk about these things. Exactly. We can't just blindly say yes to AI or no to AI. It's about finding that balance, using its power for good, but watching out for the bad stuff. It sounds like navigating this AI world is going to be tricky. It will be, but it's also a huge opportunity to make healthcare better. Like, imagine improving diagnoses, making treatments more personal, speeding up research, making quality healthcare available to everyone. That's what's so exciting about this tech. It's not just small improvements. It's totally changing how we think about health and medicine. But we can't forget healthcare is about people, right? It's about connection, empathy. You're so right. No matter how good AI gets, it can't replace that human touch, listening to patients, understanding their fears, giving comfort. So the future isn't about robots being doctors. It's about finding that balance, that teamwork between humans and AI. Using AI to make us better, not replace us. Empowering doctors, informing patients, helping researchers make breakthroughs. It's a really exciting time for healthcare. So much potential. It's a whole new frontier, and we're all exploring it together. Well, that brings us to the end of our deep dive into health GPP. It's been a wild ride, right? So many possibilities, so many things to think about. We've just scratched the surface, but hopefully this gives you a glimpse into what's coming, how AI is changing healthcare. If you take away one thing, it's this. The future of healthcare. It's not set in stone. It's something we're making with the choices we make, the questions we ask, the conversations we have. AI is powerful, but it's up to us how we use it. We have to make sure it's used ethically, responsibly for everyone's benefit. So stay curious, stay informed, stay involved in the conversation. The future of healthcare depends on all of us. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive.